if a car could be cursed? What if a machine, a collection of metal and rubber, could somehow harbor a malevolent force? Today we delve into the enigmatic tale of James Dean's Porsche Spider, infamously christened Little Bastard, a car shrouded in mystery and alleged to be cursed. Welcome to the Mystery Morgue, unlocking the crypt of the unknown. Join us if you dare. In September of 1955, a young rebellious actor named James Dean purchases a Porsche 550 Spider, a sleek silver machine matching his audacious personality. Dean, a rising star in Hollywood, had a need for speed and a penchant for living on the edge. For in the shadowed corners of Hollywood's glittering facade lies a tale shrouded in mystery and tinged with destiny. And it is this story of James Dean, a young man whose life is a restless search for something beyond the reach of fame. This quest begins, as many a boy's life begins, with his mother. Mildred Dean, who is the beacon of love and understanding in his young life, nurtures his sensitive soul and encourages his early interest in the arts and performance. Their bond is exceptionally close and loving. Born in Marion, Indiana, Dean's father, Winton, moves his family to Santa Monica, California for a job as a dental technician. In a world that often seems out of step with the young James after his move, Mildred is his sanctuary, the only person who truly understands the magnitude of his dreams and the depths of his fears. Tragically, this beacon of light extinguishes far too soon. When James is just nine years old, Mildred succumbs to cancer, leaving a void in his life that never fills. Her death is not just a loss of a mother, but the loss of his confidant and the one person who ever truly relates to him. This early heartbreak haunts Dean for the rest of his life, shaping his outlook and his destiny. Mildred's affection and understanding are the foundations upon which James builds his identity, both as a person and as an actor. Her influence echoes in his performances, in the vulnerability and intensity that are his hallmark. In every role he plays, there is a shadow of the longing and loss that defines his early years. Mildred's spirit lives on in Dean's quest for meaning and connection, a quest that drives him to the heights of fame but never quite replaces the love and understanding he lost. In his grief, he discovers solace in the thrill of risk, as if courting danger could fill the void left by his loss. Driven by a restless spirit, James moves to New York City, the concrete jungle where dreams are forged in the fire of ambition. It is there, under the tutelage of Lee Strasberg at the legendary actor's studio, that James hones his craft, delving into the depths of method acting. Strasberg's teachings urge actors to draw upon their personal emotions and memories, a technique that resonates with Dean's own tumultuous inner life. His ability to portray vulnerability and intensity on stage catches the eye of Hollywood, beckoning him to the Golden Coast. In Hollywood, James Dean quickly ascends to the status of a legend, embodying the raw, youthful angst of a generation in films like Rebel Without a Cause. His brooding persona and undeniable talent captivates audiences, marking him as a symbol of youthful disillusionment. Yet. Beneath the stardom, James's penchant for danger never wanes. He lives life at a breakneck pace, racing cars and motorcycles as if each day is his last. During this meteoric rise, James encounters the vehicle that becomes as legendary as he, a Porsche 550 Spider, a car echoing his own reckless spirit. He ominously names it Little Bastard, a moniker reflecting not just his own rebellious image, but perhaps an unconscious nod to the turmoil within. Some say the name is inspired by Bill Hickman, a Warner Brothers auto mechanic and a friend, who affectionately refers to Dean as a little bastard. This nickname, now emblazoned on the sleek silver body of the spider, seems to encapsulate Dean's defiance against the world, and perhaps his fate. The reasons behind the name Little Bastard are as complex as the man himself. It challenges the world, a label of defiance and maybe even a dark joke about his own dance with danger. The car is an extension of James's persona, a symbol of speed, freedom, and an unyielding quest for something more. The story of James Dean and his little bastard is a tale of brilliance and tragedy intertwining. It speaks to the enigma of a man who lives on the edge, whose life is a shooting star that burns too brightly to last. In the end, the name Little Bastard is a haunting prophecy, a reminder that some legends are forged in the crucible of fate leaving behind a legacy that endures beyond the fleeting flash of fame. On September 30th, 1955, the air is thick with an eerie foreboding. James Dean, 
the emblem of youthful rebellion and fleeting brilliance, embarks on a journey etching his name into the annals of tragic legends. He just wrapped up filming for Giant, his final movie, a project that adds the last brushstroke to his portrait of stardom. Yet the restless spirit of Dean sought thrill beyond the camera's gaze in the roaring silence of speed. Dean rockets off from Los Angeles, his heart set on Salinas, where he plans to race his Porsche 550 Spider, affectionately and ominously dubbed Little Bastard. The car, a sleek embodiment of speed and danger, mirrors Dean's own tempestuous soul. Accompanying him is Rolf Witherick, a Porsche mechanic, sharing Dean's passion for the race, but oblivious to the fate laying in wait. As the afternoon sun descends, casting long shadows over the California landscape, Dean and Witherick swiftly navigate the highways, their spirits high with anticipation. They pass through the town after town, the Porsche's engine a growling promise of potential yet to be unleashed. Dean, ever the maverick, had been cited for speeding earlier that day, a foreshadowing the tragic twist the day is destined to take. The clock hands march relentlessly towards the appointed hour, as Dean approaches the junction of California State Route 46 and 41 near Cholame. It is there, as the sun dips below the horizon, that a Ford Tudor sedan, driven by a college student named Donald Turnupseed, makes a fatal decision. At approximately 5.45 p.m., Turnupseed turns left, crossing into Dean's path. Time stands still as Little Bastard collides with the Ford. The impact is instantly catastrophic, a brutal ballet of metal and momentum. Dean's spider careens off the road, its body twists and mangles beyond recognition. In those final frenetic moments, James Dean's fate seals, his life extinguishes in the blink of an eye. Witherick is thrown from the car, surviving with serious injuries, but Dean is not so fortunate. The young icon, racing against his own shadows, finds his final resting place amongst the wreckage of his beloved spider. The accident scene is a grim tableau, a stark reminder of the razor's edge between fleeting brilliance and permanent oblivion. In the aftermath, as the news of Dean's death ripples through the world, a collective mourning begins. James Dean, the shooting star of Hollywood, had burnt out, leaving behind a legacy wrapped in the glamour of his films and the tragedy of his untimely demise. The eerie silence that follows the crash echoes with the questions of what might have been a haunting coda to the life of a man who lived too fast, died too young, and became immortal in death. The car, though severely damaged, survives, and thus begins the eerie legacy of Little Bastard. In the aftermath of Dean's demise, Little Bastard is purchased by two doctors, Drs. Troy McHenry and William Eshrick. Dr. Eshrick raced against Dean at Bakersfield, driving an Offenhauser Special. Subsequently, the transmission, brakes, and other undamaged mechanical parts are salvaged and sold to George Barris. Barris is a car customizer known for creating the Batmobile in the hit 1966 television show. Barris has ideas for his salvage of the wrecked spider, but the car devises other plans. The transmission, though securely fastened and routine checked several times over in Barris' world-class garage, slips off its trailer. It slips off, as if invisible hands sabotage every last safety precautions. Suddenly, crashing Little Bastard's transmission astonishingly to the ground while utterly shattering Barris's lead mechanic's leg, this is the very first of many strange incidents. His lead mechanic never walks again after unexpectedly coming in contact with Little Bastard's salvage. His leg, after many ensuing surgeries, eventually is amputated at his hip, completely losing his femur at his pelvis. Returning to Dr. Eshrick, proudly he installs Little Bastard's engine into his brand new Lotus 9. Preparing for his fateful Pebble Beach race, he reminisces with several friends, reflecting on racing with Dean just a few weeks before his untimely demise and is determined to keep his legacy alive on the speedway. On April 22, 1956, he debuts his Lotus with Little Bastard's engine on its inaugural run. Approaching the final lap, one Ernie McAfee drives a Ferrari 121 LM on a clear path to guaranteed victory. No one stands in his way, the finish line unmistakably in sight. Immediately behind him, Dr. Eshrick racing in his first-class Lotus 9. At max speeds, he shouldn't be able to gain on McAfee's lead, though eerily out of the blue, the Sterling Lotus erratically lunges forward to the gasping amazement of all onlookers. Whether Dr. Eshrick was willfully trying to overtake the Ferrari or not, no one will ever know for sure. As the little bastard's engine ferociously slammed into McAfee just before driving headlong into a tree by the track, killing Dr. Eshrick immediately. 
The Ferrari, just moments before, was well on its way to assured victory, now flips violently, end over end, horrifyingly ending Ernie McAfee's life that day. Incidentally, the legendary Carol Shelby artfully dodges around the fiery wreckage and crosses the checkered flag first. Four years later, Shelby leads the pit crew for a historically win at Le Mans for Ford Motor Company, interrupting the dynasty of dominance held by Team Ferrari. Exactly six months later, October 21st, Dr. McHenry, a world-renowned orthopedic surgeon, installs Little Bastard's steering into the restored shell of Dean's car. Many herald this day for honoring Dean's memory by finally being able to race his beloved car. Banners read, Little Bastard rides again. None are ever displayed again after this day. Another race, another assured victory, Doctor. McHenry is in his final lap with the cup and champagne celebration practically in sight. All he has to do is round one last corner, and the cup is his. But as he primes his gas, readying for his turn, Little Bastard steering goes out. The car roars angrily, sending disastrously into a concrete barrier. Suddenly end his life and the promise of a championship he surely must have thought he had won. The wreckage restored once more in the 1960s, despite its notorious reputation, Little Bastard is displayed prominently at safety exhibits. Countless people independently report feeling a dark and malevolent energy swirling around the Porsche. A few, upon having their photograph taken with car drive off to their ends. One such case involved a young James Dean fan, Marvin Washington, who just earned his driving license. Happily, he posed with his ideals 550 Spider. Afterwards, he drives straight to the intersection of California State Roads 46 and 41. Ominously, he too loses his life in a wreck all too uncannily similar to how James Dean himself died that fateful day. On and off, strange stories like this would continue around Little Bastard until 1967. After touring safety exhibits in Miami, and just after another ominous death when the shell unexpectedly and inexplicably ignited, causing several injuries with severe third-degree burns, the Porsche 550 Ace Spider is once again restowed and securely locked in a sealed boxcar. The train is bound for to Los Angeles. Though guarded at all times, upon arriving on the West Coast, the boxcar is utterly empty. No official trace of Little Bastard is ever determined ever again. Rumored sightings and milestones of Little Bastard. After its disappearance in 1967, the mysterious disappearance of James Dean's Porsche 550 Spider, known as Little Bastard, gave rise to numerous rumors and alleged sightings over the years. Here's a timeline of the key milestones related to these elusive appearances. In the late 1960s, early rumors begin. Shortly after its disappearance, enthusiasts and conspiracy theorists speculate that Little Bastard is hidden in a private collection, kept away from the public eye due to its cursed reputation. In the 1974, there is a clandestine exhibit. An unverified report claims Little Bastard is seen in a secretive car show in Utah. An anonymous owner displays it under the strictest and most austere conditions, preventing photographs or forbidding any details for closer inspection. In 1982, there is a foreign connection. Rumors surface of Little Bastard seen in a private garage in Japan, earliest report being in 1982, though these corresponding accounts continue through the decade. Dean's car is alleged to be the crown jewel as part of a collection owned by an eccentric millionaire with a penchant for cursed objects. Urban legends claim Little Bastard is prominently displayed on a platform in an elaborate eight-car garage surrounded by seven luxury cars. Who this is exactly is never officially confirmed, though one name that circulates more than most is that of Akio Kashiwagi. Kashiwagi, interestingly enough, is also known as the Warrior. In Japan, he is revered as a businessman, though he also a notorious gambler who lives an extravagant lifestyle. Many reliable sources allege his long-standing connections to the Yakuza, or Japanese Mafia. About 10 years after these rumors are first circulated and well after sunset on January 3rd in 1992, Kashiwagi is home in his complex Mount Fuji estate. His mansion boasts state-of-the-art security. And yet, somehow, an intruder enters and exits his home who is never captured on any recording. His life ends this night upon receiving 150 stab wounds from a priceless katana from his own collection of valuables. Not only is this invaluable katana left at the scene of the crime, but also all of his diamonds, antiques, and $770,000 in cash are left totally untouched. Nothing is out of place, and there is no sign of any break-in at all. All seven of his public-driven and well-known luxury cars are all parked in his elaborate eight-car garage. Worth noting, there is prominently displayed empty platform with a ramp in the center of his garage. 
though no evidence of any car ever having been parked can ever be accurately determined with any certainty. Later the same year, a story circulates about a European auction where Little Bastard is allegedly listed under a pseudonym. The car reportedly is ominously withdrawn at the last minute by a seller fearing the curse. No further details outside of 1992 are heard about the Porsche Spider before entering the 21st century. In 2005, the internet fuels the legend. Online forums buzz with eerily similar claims that parts of Little Bastard are found in a warehouse in California, but authorities never confirm the find as genuine parts of the legendary car. In 2012, a viral social media post suggests Little Bastard is digitally scanned and identified in a private collection using advanced imaging technology. The post, however, is later debunked as a hoax. In 2015, exactly on September 30th, the 60th anniversary of Dean's death, an anonymous tip claims Little Bastard is buried in the foundation of a building in Washington State, but no evidence is found after a preliminary investigation. In 2020, a documentary filmmaker announces they have confirmed leads on the precise whereabouts of Little Bastard, sparking immense renewed interest and anticipation. On the day shooting is to commence, the studio lot shuts down completely. The COVID-19 pandemic delays exploration and the mystery remains unsolved. The production is officially canceled within a year, and unfortunately, the family reports this filmmaker to be one of those who loses their life to COVID. Out of deference to the family's wishes, the filmmaker's name, identity, and gender is respectfully omitted from our story today. Despite numerous alleged sightings and rumors, the true fate of Little Bastard remains one of the automotive world's greatest enigmas. Each rumor expands another layer to the legend, fueling the myth that James Dean's Porsche 550 Spider continues to elude discovery, shrouded in mystery and speculation, still racing just out of sight from the public's eye. The story of Little Bastard is a chilling blend of fact, urban legend, curse, and folklore. A tale of a car that seemingly harbors an evil and treacherous force. Is this merely a series of eerie coincidences or is Little Bastard truly cursed? An embodiment of Dean's reckless spirit and untimely demise. James Dean once said, Dream as if you'll live forever. Live as if you'll die today. His life, his death, and the enigma of Little Bastard serve as a haunting reminder of this mantra. Today, the legend of Little Bastard continues to captivate and confound, a chilling testament to the allure of the unknown. Next time on Mystery Morgue, in the quiet of the night, under the watchful gaze of the infinite cosmos, a journey beyond belief unfolded on a desolate highway. This is the story of Betty and Barney Hill, an ordinary couple thrust into the extraordinary. September 19, 1961, a night that etches itself into the annals of the unexplained. Meet Betty and Barney Hill, a couple from Portsmouth, New Hampshire, embark on a road trip that turns into one of the most compelling and debated encounters in UFO history. As they drive through the White Mountains, a luminous object catches their eyes. It inarguably isn't a plane. It isn't a star. It is something otherworldly. Their curiosity turns to terror as the silent, illuminated craft descends closer, defying the laws of physics as we know them. With hearts racing and nowhere to run, they experience what few ever imagine, a close encounter challenging the very fabric of reality. It is only under hypnosis that the full extent of their journey comes to light. Memories buried deep unveil a narrative so astonishing it captivates the entire world. What did Betty and Barney Hill really see that night? Are they visitors from another world, or is it all just a figment of the imagination? Join us on Mystery Morgue, where secrets refuse to rest in peace, as we delve deep into the abduction of Betty and Barney Hill, uncover the truth, the skepticism, and the story that intrigues UFO enthusiasts and skeptics alike for decades. Coming soon, subscribe and hit the bell icon to never miss a mystery, and if you don't want to arouse the curse of Little Bastard, please be sure to like today's story. Thank you for watching with us today. Buckle your seatbelt, obey the laws of the road, and drive safe.